Super. Thank you, Evan. All right. We're starting a little late, but historically, I'll have preferred music over uh, ending on time. So we're, we're, we're wrong with that one. <coughs> Ashley's putting a lot of time and effort into music for Christmas season, which I hope you all enjoy as much as she does. So if not, hang in there. You'll learn to like it, right? What's that? You'll learn to like it, right? You'll learn to like it. Yeah. You can't beat her, so just join her. Just, just enjoy. Um, we'll go ahead and turn to First Kings chapter three this morning. And uh, before we get started, once more, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. <coughs> we thank you for another chance to come and learn from your word. Lord, I pray today that we'll see the truth in the of the gospel and the scriptures. Lord, I pray that I, as the speaker, will be clear. And simple in my speech. Lord, help me to say what you want me to say, not say anything I should not say. Help me to get out of your way and for these people to see Jesus in the scriptures. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. So, 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 6. It's Solomon has just become uh, king here and, and uh, king of Israel. Verse 6 And Solomon said, Thou hast shown unto thy servant David. My father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in kindness and in uprightness of heart with thee, and thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne, as it is this day. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Okay? So, stop for a moment. What is Solomon's attitude? Is humble. Who is Solomon in this moment? He's the top dog. He's he is the king, right? Landon, if I made you the king of a country, someone made you king of a country, and you you sat down on a throne, you had a gold crown, and everybody had to do whatever you said. Would you be like, oh man, I don't know anything. I'm, I'm going to be real real humble. And I'm going to I'm going to be the best king. No, you'd be like. Bring me money, bring me whatever it was, bring me some girls, whatever it is that you're into, right? You you would be like, this is awesome. That's not the attitude that Solomon had. Now, what else do we know about Solomon? Some of you can, can have read ahead. What do we know about Solomon? He was the richest man that ever lived. He was the wisest man that ever lived. And at the time of his, of his kingdom, he was the most powerful man that living. So let me tell you something here. If you think you're all that in a bag of chips, you don't compare to Solomon. I don't have millions of people that do my bidding. I don't even have one. My dog doesn't even do what I say half the time. <laughs> I don't have trillions of dollars in wealth doing good to pay the bills someday. I don't have mountains of wisdom, so much that people come and ask me my opinion. Most people don't listen to me half the time anyway. But Solomon, who has all these things, says, Lord, I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. I think of my little daughter. She's not supposed to be in my office, which is where I keep my tools about me. And she's not supposed to be in my bedroom, which is where I keep other things, toys with hole punches and the like, without me. Now, they're all locked up, don't need anybody's gas. But I don't want her in there. And so I go, Grace, get out. And she goes, no, 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 get her this way. And you take her little head in her little hand, you, this way. Solomon says to God, I am like a little kid, I don't know which way to go. I need you. Teach me, I'm dumb. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon asked this thing. 
Verse 11. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast mm -hmm. not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy word. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart. Now, for those of you that haven't been listening to me for three years, what's the heart? Is it this uh, this pump in my body that moves blood through my circulatory system? No, no, they got it. It's this gray matter up here between my ears. This is my heart when the Bible talks about the heart. You believe in your heart? You think of your heart? Yeah. So, an understanding heart so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, and keep my statutes and commandments, and as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream, and he came to Jerusalem, and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Solomon realized in that moment what was most important, and that was understanding. That was wisdom from God. Now, Solomon did pretty well from himself, as we have talked about. You know that all other kingdoms on earth at that point were looking to Israel. They, there was no kingdom ever like Solomon's. Nobody wanted to fight him. Everybody wanted to be him. Everybody wanted to give him everything. Solomon wanted the one thing nobody else today, nobody today seems to care about. You know, we have mountains of information. You pull out these things in your pocket, these, these smartphones, you go on the internet. I'm, I'm old school. I have a desktop. And I can get information on anything I want. The only problem is, there's a good chance about half of it's not true. You realize that? Everybody's figured that out at this point in life, right? The thing on the screen is not always true, right? Folks, information is not necessarily wisdom or knowledge. We've got so much fake news that... Uh, we don't even bother watching the news anymore. I don't. Y'all, y'all turn on the TV. You know, back in the uh, back in the day when they first started doing news programs, you could turn on the TV and they would tell you what happened. Now you turn on the TV and they tell you what to think. It has nothing to do with what happened. Right. And it don't matter what side of the aisle you sit on. Both sides are terrible. <clears throat> fake news. What makes one any better than the other? How do we know this isn't fake news? You gotta prove what well, says try me and see. Turn to Proverbs. Turn to Proverbs. Now, pop quiz, who wrote Proverbs? Trick question, more than one person, but Solomon wrote most of them. So let's turn to Proverbs chapter four. And Brother Armstrong is correct. Solomon did write this one. It says so in Proverbs 1, it's continued. It starts in chapter 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Alright? Which we memorized Proverbs 1 a little bit ago, right? Okay. So Proverbs chapter 4, in verse 1. So Solomon was humbled and refers to himself as a little child. Right? So in verse 4, or chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Hear ye children. The instruction of a father, and attends to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine, and forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. He taught me also, and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words, keep my commandments, and live. Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth, Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. I find this a funny, a funny way to say it. Go 
go out and get stuff. And while you're getting stuff, make sure you get understanding. Make sure that you don't forget understanding. You must have it. Who told Solomon that? Hear ye children, the instruction of a father. For I was my father's son. So who told David? King David told Solomon, do not forsake wisdom and understanding. Verse 8, exalt her. Exalt who? Who's her? Wisdom. And she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Folks, what is, what is the wisdom and understanding that we need? Understanding of the scriptures, of the gospel. Folks, that, that is the very core of the wisdom that Solomon is talking about. Of the wisdom and understanding that God gave Solomon. What was more valuable than everything else on earth? Understanding. Folks, understanding the scriptures, understanding the gospel, is more valuable than everything else on earth. What so profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? <clears throat> right. Turn to Genesis chapter 22. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 22. You may say, well, Brother Josh, how, do, how does Solomon and Proverbs go together with what we're going to read in Genesis here? How does, it, how does it go with Abraham? God taught Abraham the gospel, and this is the method he chose to do it. Abraham was God's first preacher. Now realize that? His first missionary, first preacher, first, first patriarch. Why? He called him out and said, I will give you these things because I know that you will teach your children what I tell you to teach them. And if you do that, I will make you a great nation and your deliverance will come through your children. What does that mean? The line of Christ. Okay? So Jesus would later be born through the children of Abraham, through the Israelites, the Hebrews. So Abraham was the first preacher. In, verse, in uh, Genesis chapter 22, verse 1, God is teaching Abraham the gospel. The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He showed him an example by Isaac. He gave him a son and then told him to sacrifice his son. Yes, brother, real quick. Galatians 3, 8, where it says where God preached the gospel unto Abraham. Thank you. All right. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for a burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. So Abraham, you were talking about not being able to solve all of your problems. Abraham is already demonstrating a significant amount of faith. Why? First thing he said, I and the lad will come again. His instructions are to go kill him. But he says, I, we'll both come back. 
And then Isaac goes, uh, Dad, are you forgetting something? I know how this works. You can't kill a lamb without one. And Abraham says, God will provide. Abraham's not worried. Maybe he is, I don't know. But he's, he's telling Isaac not to worry. In verse 9, And they came to the place where God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from thee. And Abraham lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his thorn. <clears throat> and Abraham went and took the ram, and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. So this is interesting, because... So well, why did God tempt Abraham? Didn't he know what would happen? Yes, exactly. Abraham knew what would happen too. Abraham was just doing what he was told. So we're going to go do this thing. You do this. And didn't give him the rest of it. He didn't say, oh, by the way, there's going to be a ram waiting for you to chop him out. He said, you go offer Isaac. Isaac represents mankind. Y'all realize that? We deserve death. We are sinners. We deserve death and hell. And we are, we are to be offered. Like Isaac. But God. <laughs> but God intervened. And offers a substitute. I find it interesting in verse 11 that he says Abraham twice. <clears throat> God, God called to Abraham in haste. I called my daughter's name twice so much. I call, that's, that's her name now. Grace, 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 Grace. Because she never listened the first time. She never listened the first time, but I've said it twice now. Um, so he goes, Abraham, Abraham. All right, I got your attention. This is what you're here for. Verse 14, Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh simply means God will provide. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld my, thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because he did what he was told, through him Christ would come, <clears throat> through his line. Verse 19, so Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. This was important for Abraham to do this. So that we can see the example. So that he can see the example. And he can tell his children. So that he can tell their children. So that all the Israelites would know the story of Isaac. Even if you didn't understand the gospel. If I dragged my daughter up a mountain. And told her that we were going to sacrifice and come back. Y'all would think I was crazy. Y'all call CPS on me. Some of y'all probably tackle me. But it was a story to be told to the Israelites. Why? So they would understand the gospel. Turn to Acts chapter 8. Verse 14. Acts chapter 8. Verse 26. It says, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip. Philip was a New Testament apostle. He's, he's preaching. Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. <clears throat> and he arose and went. Behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. This is an important person. He's a smart and wealthy and important person. Okay? was returning and sitting in his chariot read Isaiah the prophet and when the spirit said unto Philip go near and join thyself to this chariot and Philip ran thither to him and 
heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? This is a complete and total stranger has run up to this important person and says, You understand what you're reading. If someone ran up to me and I was reading anything else, I said, You understand what you're reading? Well, yes, obviously, that's why I'm reading it. You smart person, go away. Is that not how most people react? No. His response is, how can I, except some man should guide me? He was looking for understanding with humility. Landon, do you know that when you're young, and teenager especially, you think you start to know more than your parents, you start to know, oh, I, I certainly did when I was young, but man, I know so much, I'm, I'm smarter, I, I got it figured out. And then as you get older, you realize the older I get, the dumber I get. The older I get, the less I know. Right? You can't teach someone that already knows everything. Now, nobody knows everything except God. So the way you learn is you have to start with an attitude of humility. We see that Solomon, his attitude was what? Lord, I don't know anything. The Lord said, that's a great place to start. Ethiopian eunuch says, what, you, you understand what you're reading? He goes, no, how can I? Explain it to me. All right? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Verse 32. And the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Amen. Where is that verse that the uh, eunuch is reading from? It's in Isaiah chapter 53. Who's that chapter about? Jesus. Jesus. He's looking in the scripture. He's looking and doesn't understand. Folks, we look in the scripture and we think we understand because we already know everything. Folks, if you're lost, your attitude should be, Lord, I'm a little child. I know not whether to go out or come in. Please teach me. Verse 36, and as they went on their way, they came into a certain water. And the eunuch said, here, see, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. The gospel is this, folks. God loved the world. That he gave Jesus to die in our place and washed us from our sins in his own blood. It says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Turn to 1 John chapter 5 and we'll wrap. 1 John chapter 5. Here is the gospel. Here is what your heart must understand. Is that Jesus died for you. Jesus paid for your sins, him and no one else. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that, ye be that believe on the name of of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Folks, you want an understanding heart. Now, our flesh wants riches and honor and glory and power and all these things. We, we get up in the morning, we work for money, and we, we try to increase our social standing and these things. But folks, the only thing of any value is truth. 
That's all. You can't take it with you. We'll wrap with this. In Job chapter 19, verse 25, Job said, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Folks, salvation is done. You are forgiven. Eternal life is yours. Trust Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for these folks here. Lord, we thank you for this service. Lord, I pray that we will study throughout the week, that we'll come back with knowledge and questions, and be able to help other people come to the knowledge of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.